Now you know how to make beef bone broth in a slow cooker. And knowing is half the battle. Well, it's that time of year again. The leaves are falling, temperature is dropping, and it's definitely time to enjoy some rich, nutrient-packed beef bone broth. In this edition of Throwback Thursday, we go back almost two years. Larry and I have been on the carnivore diet for 30 days when he created this recipe video, and we only had 130 subscribers. He was using a Galaxy 6 smartphone, with no lighting, microphones, or even a tripod. I remember he would periodically call me in the kitchen to hold the camera for him. Larry spent five days creating this video, basically when nobody was watching, and it's a testament to his love for Carnivore Quest. And I think that alone deserves a little boop on the like button. With all that being said, this is one of my favorite early videos. It's easy to follow, and this method for making beef bone broth comes out perfect every time. Just look at how gelatinous it is, and look at that color. And this right here is from our first batch of the season. Now you may notice that Larry doesn't look that heavy in the video. He was around the same weight he is now, about 280 pounds. We were doing great on carnivore, but this was before our first tea, about a month and a half later, which led to some major binging and major weight gain. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to the yo-yo routine. Larry blew up to 354 pounds, and I got up to, well, there's no need to go there. 274 pounds. We've now been on carnivore for almost eight months and have lost 150 pounds combined. I've taught Larry everything he knows in the kitchen, but this recipe is his and it's a home run. Just don't reheat your bone broth the way he does in the video or you'll have to answer to me. So let's jump back in time and learn how to make the world's best beef bone broth in a crock pot. So my carnivore diet bone broth um, is basically um, very simple. There's no vegetables or anything for flavor other than salt. Um, I use four pounds of beef marrow bones that look like this. And I've made quite a few batches, probably 20 batches. So I know it's for this six quart crock pot, that's about what you need. I also throw in um, some ribeye bones that we save in the freezer. You know, I might throw like this package in, you know, maybe, I mean, I've, I've done it with or without, but you know, as much marrow as you can get, right? As much collagen and all the good stuff. But I've made batches with just the four pounds and you're good with that. And then you're gonna need apple cider vinegar, not much of it, just a splash, and salt and water. And of course, a crock pot. Um, we just got an Instapot, but um, for the longest time, I've been making bone broth um, in here. And for those of you out there who only have a crock pot, um, you can't go wrong with this, so let's do it. The first step to this awesome bone broth is roasting the bones in an oven at 425 degrees um, for about 20 minutes. Um, I just got a cookie sheet lined up with foil and then laid them out here and 20 minutes and uh, we'll pull them out. All right. These suckers. Some people leave them in longer, but I've tried that before and a lot of the marrow comes out of the bone, so 15, 20 minutes, you're good. Now just fill up that pot. All right, so all the roasted bones are in the pot. Um, I have this um, ribeye bone from lunch. I'm just gonna toss that in there. Here are the bones that I had frozen. So that four pounds of bones would do it. I'm just throwing a couple extra bones in. You don't want to put too many in because then you won't get as much bone broth because you won't be able to add as much water. But if you don't put enough bones, um, your bone broth won't turn into a gelatin when, it, when it's refrigerated and, and that's what you want. So as you can see, I fill it right to the top as much as I can get. And then I just do a little splash real quick, just like that. I don't even measure it. Boom, apple cider vinegar and I just real generous with the salt. I end up actually, um, you know, when I when I make myself a cup after it's done, I'll even add more salt into it. So we'll start this out on high for three hours 
once that come to a nice boil then uh, you go down to low um, I go for 48 hours um, some people do only 24 hours but I want all the goodness out of those bones so I'll see you guys in two days well all right it's been two days I'll turn the sucker off and I haven't opened it once usually I do smell it Hot. oh yeah look at that goodness so I'm gonna show you guys uh, how I cool it off there's important to a jar um, I do it in a pan so it cools off quicker so I can get it in the fridge but first we got to remove these bones all right now we just take some tongs and remove those bones look at that neat you can see all the cartilage is gone Now the meat uh, that comes off the bones, the leftover ribeye bones that I use, I'll let that dry out and uh, give it to our dogs. Alright, I removed all the bones. Um, smells awesome. Um, now we're just going to strain all the bone broth through this strainer into this pan and give it more surface area and let it cool down. Oh, I got a couple pot holders. This is really hot. And then just strain it slowly. And there it is. So I'm going to let this cool maybe for two hours, two to three hours, until it's, uh, you know, a good enough temperature to stick in the refrigerator. And then the next step is tomorrow. It's a long process, but it is well worth it. Absolutely delicious. Just look at that. That's going to be so good. All right, guys. It's been three days since we made the bone broth. Cooked it for 48 hours. Then it was in the fridge overnight. And I'm, I'm thinking it came out like perfect. So let's check it out. Now, I want to say, when you go to grab it out of the fridge, be careful because if you got your ratio wrong and it's still a liquid, it'll spill all over. I've done it. Went in to grab it and <laughs> it was a big greasy mess. So, I do now just cut around the edges. Oh, I'll see it's separating nice. Oh, yeah, okay, cool, perfect. Now, we'll just lift it. Now this layer on top is all the fat, and then that is the bone broth. Now I save my tallow, they call this tallow, and I put it in a pot. Now this is what we want. Look how it's like a gelatin. Look at it jiggle. <laughs> and see how dark it is? That is nutrient dense right there. That came out really good. So now I'm going to scoop this into a, a Tupperware and put it in the fridge. It'll be good. Some people just pour it right into a tall glass jar. I read that if you spread it out like this, it'll cool quicker. And it's better to do that. But that's just the way I've done it. It's probably good either way. But um, yeah, man, I'm going to enjoy this. So I couldn't wait long. I'm going to make me a cup right now. Look at that jiggle. That's awesome. Man, that's going to be good. Well, let's see if it was worth the wait. Three days to make that batch total. Um, I mean, look how dark it is. It looks awesome. I just added a little more salt as I was heating it up, and I heated it in the microwave. Don't tell my wife, Cassie, that. Cause she'll fall over. She won't recover. Um, she's all about heating this kind of stuff on the stove. God bless her. But um, let's see. 
Mmm, that's awesome. Now you can do chicken broth the same way, pork, um, you know, just throw those bones in and experiment a little. Uh, the slow cooker has been awesome for us. Um, like I said um, earlier, I'm going to try that uh, Instapot because I hear it can make it in like two hours. So with both of us drinking a lot of bone broth, it'll definitely help out. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you subscribe to our channel and join us on our carnivore quest where we are attempting to lose 200 pounds um, living the carnivore lifestyle. Mmm, well worth the wait. Now you know how to make beef bone broth in a slow cooker. And knowing is half the battle.